Well, welcome to this presentation. Uh, my name is Claude Wishick. I'm the CEO of Tower X Pharmaceuticals. Uh, the, the company has, as you can see, uh, as a mission to discover, develop and commercialize new products for diagnosis, treatment and cure of neurodegenerative diseases caused through protein aggregation. The most common and prominent of these is Alzheimer's disease. The, the purpose of this uh, educational presentation is to explain in a way that hopefully is readily understandable how tau protein affects the brain, how it affects the mind and how it causes dementia and how the treatment we are developing can, can slow that process down. The, the background of all of this comes from over 30 years of research uh, that members of the TowerX team have been engaged in, all the way back from the original discovery of tau protein as, as uh, the protein that is the main building block of the tangles that Alzheimer himself discovered. So that's a few words of introduction. Now over to Dr. Miller, who, who will take you through the, this educational video. Thank you, Claude. And hello and welcome once again to this presentation of targeting tau in Alzheimer's disease. I shall be discussing with you, <coughs> excuse me, normal brain function and the critical role of the tau protein in normal brain function. We shall then move on to the features of the normal aging brain and then on to what happens when normal proteins become abnormal and what we can do about that. The healthy brain is a massive biocomputer running on a combination of electrical and chemical or neurotransmitter exchanges. The brain relies on its neuronal network so we need to understand firstly what exactly is a neuron. It is the fundamental unit of the brain and the nervous system. It is in fact its infrastructure. A neuron is therefore critical in allowing us to process sensory input from our world and react to that. Neurons allow us to function, to be alive. The synapse is the gap or space between neurons as they don't actually touch, which is why they need the neurotransmitters to carry the messages across. This is intensely demanding of energy, which is provided by the mitochondria. These are the powerhouses of all cells, and they create energy-rich molecules, ATP, for the cells by breaking down glucose. And synapses are loaded with mitochondria. A neuron is composed of a cell body which surrounds the nucleus where the neurotransmitters are produced. However, the neurotransmitters need to be transported long distances to the end of the axon to be used to cross the synapses. This is possible due to the microtubules. They are both the internal infrastructure of the neuron, they are microscopic hollow tubes and as such, they allow to, them to function as the conveyor belt within the cells. They allow the movement of mitochondria and vesicles. The SNARE acronym is one of those wonderful ones where the word actually reflects its function. The SNARE complex has a crucial role in neurotransmitter function and does in fact catch and release them. It controls the docking, the priming, the fusion, and the synchronized neurotransmitter release into the synaptic cleft. So let's consider the roles of tau in healthy neurons. Normal tau protein has several critical roles in the function of the normal healthy brain. It is essential for normal neuronal function. And here, is the critical role of the tau protein. 
Tau is the protein which sits across the subunits of the microtubule, so it binds and stabilizes them and allows for normal function of structural support and transport of the mitochondria and synaptic vesicles. If we look at the actual tau protein, it is the central part of the tau protein, which is called the repeat domain, which performs this absolutely vital function of binding the subunits of the microtubule together. So now we come to the real challenge, the aging brain. The brain is not exempt from the normal aging processes of our body. As in all functioning of a living metabolism, waste products are formed. And with age, our ability to clear such waste diminishes. The gradual accumulation of this matter within our neurons causes an inflammatory response which starts to affect cellular function. One of the products that builds up is called lipofusin. It is a wear and tear, fine yellow brown pigmented granule composed of the lipid containing residue of lysosomal digestion. The role of the lysosomes is to break down excess or worn out cell proteins. Now, here is where it gets really interesting. Let's talk about good tau behaving badly. It is not actually so much that the tau protein misbehaves. It is more that it is being led astray by the abnormal binding within the neurons caused by the aging process. We have talked already about the increased waste and the decreased clearance that leads to an increase in lipofusin and tau starts to bind to the lipofusin and form oligomers. By binding to the lipofusin, tau actively changes its structure and forms a stable hairpin structure, which is the very sharp curve you can see in the repeat domain, the red section. This in turn forms the basis for more tau to change and come and add to the stack. The oligomers twist into paired helical filaments and form tangles. So clearly, this is good tau gone bad, and this now has a devastating impact on the neuron and the functioning of the synapse. And it's much more than that. The abnormal tau aggregates now result in microtubular instability which in turn leads to disruption of the mitochondrial and vesicle transport to the synapse. This also causes disruption of the snare complex at the synapse, so that the neurotransmitters do not transmit across the synapse as they normally would. So we have microtubular instability with loss of function and eventually no function. Tau also spreads within the brain. The misfolded proteins are capable of transferring between interconnected neuronal networks, and this can act as a template to induce further aggregation. It is a cascade effect. So here it is, all linked together. A normal, healthy neuron subjected to the stresses of aging produces extra waste, including lipofusin, which tau then binds to and continues to accumulate to form abnormal bundles and tangles until the cell, the neuron, swells to such an extent that it ruptures and dies, leaving behind the hallmark late stage ghost tangle. But, not only do we clearly now understand more of this process, what is more important to us all, as doctors and scientists, as family and patients, is that the pattern and extent of the abnormal tau aggregation in the brain correlates with the loss of cognitive function for the patient. This starts in the neocortex and hippocampus, which controls memory 
and then continues to spread. And here we have such an important point. As the Tau advances, so does the loss of function. Tau spread mirrors cognitive effect. Now compare that to amyloid. Beta amyloid is the other naturally occurring protein which becomes abnormal in Alzheimer's disease, forming hard, insoluble plaques that clump together between the neurons. The extent and progression of amyloid deposition in the brain does not, however, mirror the cognitive decline in patients, and this is crucial. The IDEAS study was a recent observational and imaging study of over 18,000 patients completed in December 2017, which aimed to show that the findings on amyloid PET scan would correlate with the degree of cognitive impairment and translate into earlier interventions and treatments in order to prove outcome. But unfortunately, it did not. Our focus has always been on tau. We are excited about the second generation tau ligands for PET scanning and the potential development of blood testing for easier and quicker test 